Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I'm a licensed hairstylist and in today's video I am going to show you how to get loose waves with a traditional curling iron. That's kind of become like my go-to signature style when I wear my hair smooth. Before we jump into the tutorial, quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Dossier. If you've never heard of Dossier before, they make dupes for popular designer fragrances. I first discovered them about two years ago and at this point almost all of the perfumes that I own are from Dossier and whenever I'm looking for a new fragrance, I immediately just go to Dossier. Like I don't even bother wasting my money on the designer brand name sense. By eliminating retailer markups, celebrity marketing, and licensing fees, they can offer luxury scents for 70 to 90% less. So for example, a full-size perfume from a luxury brand is typically $100 to $350, but from Dossier, their perfumes start at $19. And their products are all made from clean ingredients for the best quality possible. My absolute favorite scent at the moment is the Ambery Saffron which is a dupe for the Baccarat Rouge 540, which the full price of that goes for like over $200, I believe. But from Dossier, it's under 50. So, and as you can see, I really love this. Like I legitimately wear it almost every single day. So if you wanna check out Dossier and get yourself some new fragrances, I will have a link any discount code down in the description that will get you 10% off your order. Thank you again Dossier for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the tutorial. Things that you are going to need is a curling iron. This one is a one and a quarter inch barrel. The bigger the barrel is, the bigger and looser your curl is going to be. The smaller the barrel, the tighter the curl is. So I find that a one and a quarter or one and a half inch is perfect because it's kind of like right in the middle. And then as far as product goes, you're going to need a heat protectant that is so extremely important anytime you're putting any heat on your hair and then also a hairspray. I really love this spray from Kenra. This is their color maintenance thermal spray because it's a two-in-one. It's a heat protectant and it's also a medium hold hairspray. I'll have a link to this in the description. I've been using it for years. It's just my go-to. And then I also suggest a dry shampoo. I love the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe texturizing dry shampoo. It's my favorite one. Okay, so to start out, you wanna section your hair wherever you normally wear it. I like to do a middle part. And then we're going to section our hair. And that's my first section. And I'm gonna split it down the middle, pull on my hair forward. Before I start curling, I'm gonna take my thermal spray, give it a good shake, and spray that section. And I like to get all sides of the hair so that it's, I'm not missing any pieces. And then I will usually take my brush, comb it through, make sure it's evenly distributed, and that there's no tangles and then I'm gonna split this section into smaller sections this I would say is probably like I don't know maybe like an inch and a half wide you don't want the sections that you're curling to be too thick because then the curl is not gonna hold as well and I'm gonna try to like break this down as much as possible so I'm gonna put my pointer finger on the clamp and pointing the iron up to the ceiling I'm gonna open up that clamp and I'm gonna start at the top of the piece of hair, clamp down, give it a twist, a full rotation, so that it's back in the starting position. I'm gonna hold it there for a second. Then I'm gonna untwist, twist again, another full rotation, hold it there for a second again. And now at this point, I'm at the bottom of that piece, so I'm gonna untwist and then just pull straight down. So by untwisting each time, that's what's kind of like pulling it down and giving it that looser look. So after I do that, I leave it alone, do not touch it, let it cool. Now it might look easy watching me do it, but then when you go to do it yourself, it might feel awkward. If you're still learning how to use a curling iron, I highly suggest practicing this with your curling iron turned off. If you have this cranked up to full heat and you're sitting there and you're awkwardly trying to maneuver it, you might burn your hair. You might be holding it in one spot for too long. You might accidentally touch it with your hands or like touch your neck. Practice this a few times until you feel like you've gotten the hang of it and then actually turn it on and start curling your hair. Again, pointer finger on the clamp, point it up to the ceiling. Clamp down up top. Give it a good twist. And as I'm twisting it, I'm like kind of pulling down a little bit. Hold it there for a second. 
untwist, rotate it again, hold it there, untwist, pull straight down the end. Onto the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Pointer finger on, I keep wanting, I keep wanting to say on the trigger, <laughs> on the clamp, and we're going to point up to the ceiling, same exact way, with the clamp facing forward. This is important too. You want to make sure that you are curling in the right direction and you're going with the curling iron and not curling away. So for example, if I were to do this and then curl this way, I would be going against that clamp and then that's how you end up getting those kinks. You see that? The little kink in my hair. So you want to make sure that everything is like going smooth and in the right direction. So pointer finger on the clamp, Pointing up towards the ceiling, clamp down, pull it down a little bit, twist, hold it there for a second, untwist, twist again, hold it there for a second, untwist, pull straight down. And you can see as I'm rotating this, I move to my thumb. Like I constantly have a finger on the clamp so that I can like ever so slightly open it up the teensiest bit so that I'm able to like pull down so that I'm working down that piece of hair as I'm moving along curling. I hope that makes sense. So this is what we have so far. I'm gonna just toss that behind me and then we're gonna let down our next section and just keep repeating the exact same thing. like you're just not able to get the hang of this and you're like I just can't do it with the clamp I want to show you you can use your curling iron like a wand and just wrap the hair around like this just hold it there for a couple seconds but it does kind of give you a slightly different type of wave but that is an option that you can do I just honestly, I don't know, I just feel like going through with the curling iron for me is just faster, but you absolutely could do that too. And then if you feel like the ends need to get smoothed down a little bit more, you can just clamp down on the ends and pull straight down or use a flat iron. And I also just feel like on my hair, the waves last longer when I do it this way with the clamp because the hair is getting heat from like all sides. Whereas when you just wrap it like a wand, it's only getting heat on one side, if that makes sense. So once you're done curling every section, do not touch it until it is completely cooled off. If you start messing with the curls while they're still warm, they're just going to fall flat and they're not going to hold their shape as much. And then once it's cool, I just comb through it with my fingers. You can also use a wide tooth comb, but I would just be careful to not use a brush that has like really close tight teeth because then it can brush the hair out a little bit too much and kind of make it frizzy. And then you can see up top looks a little flat. So what I like to do at this point is lift up that top section of my hair and then I'm going to take my texturizing dry shampoo and I'm going to spray at the root a little bit. 
Not only is this going to add some body to my hair, but it's also going to prevent my hair from getting greasy as quickly. I have a separate video all about dry shampoo, sharing like my tips and tricks. So I will link that in the description. Do the same thing on this side. And then once I sprayed it all over my root area, I will go through and kind of like hold up parts of my hair and give it a little spritz throughout the ends as well so that it just adds some texture and then I go through and I just kind of rub it into the root give it a little zhuzh look at the difference that is it for this tutorial. I hope that you guys found it helpful. I hope that I was able to explain that well enough. It really just takes a lot of practice. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.